Of course, parity, gender parity in parliamentary representation is the ideal, but till such time that ideal is reached. And we have been advocating also for special measures in a number of countries working for that. And from Algeria to Libya to uh, Senegal now, which is the latest example, um, we now see more and more women in parliament. You've described violence against women as an extreme form of discrimination. What is UN Women doing to combat this scourge? The phenomenon of violence against women, unfortunately, is a, is a universal phenomenon. Developed, developing, small, big countries, different stages of development. Um, and as you said, it's the most uh, um, it's the most um, condemnable uh, and pervasive uh, violation of human rights. And in that context, therefore, it's, it's one of the biggest priorities um, when we seek uh, gender equality and women's empowerment. So when we, when we try to address this phenomenon, we have to look at prevention we have to look at protection. We have to look at provision of response services. And that's what we are working on. We have this uh, Secretary General's Unite to End Violence Against Women campaign. Uh, we have um, uh, the uh, Say No to Violence Against Women campaign. And if you look at just the Say No to Violence campaign, we have uh, just in the last two years, uh, less than two years, we have been able to generate and activate uh, as many as nearly six million actions by people around the world, governments, by officials, by individuals, community leaders, faith-based organizations, uh, civil society organizations, women's organizations, to combat violence against women. A Bell Bajau campaign in, in India. This Bell Bajau campaign is about how neighbors can alert, you know, will ring the bell if they, you know, hear something about domestic, that that's, there's some domestic violence going on, how they can then alert, they can then report, and what we are also doing is that um, educational curricula are being set up. For example, UN Women has signed up uh, with uh, the World Association of Girl Guides and Scouts to include in the curricula, and this, this is a very wide reach because there are 10 million girls and 10 million boys in this whole program, because you have to start at, at the beginning, you know, when they are still very young and impressionable and where they form all these uh, stereotypes about uh, the relationship between men and women and girls and boys. So to promote respectful relationships, how they are more harmonious and how they are more fulfilling rather than one based on domination and aggression and, and violence. Violence is going to be the main theme for the Commission for the status of women meeting next year. What do you think is going to be the outcome given that there's so much um, disagreement on the issue? Uh, member states are already negotiating a resolution on this in the United, uh, UNG Assembly, so in the, in the third committee. So uh, there are a number of issues, of course, that will come up and, and um, they uh, hopefully will be resolved. I am very, because I think as long as we reaffirm, there are a number of commitments, normative commitments already there, and we have to reaffirm those commitments. There should be no regression from that. In fact, a recommitment to that. And I think we should be able to get a recognition that ending violence against women is closely related to economic empowerment, political empowerment, other aspects of um, uh, gender equality and women's empowerment, so that everything has to be addressed together. 
and that one is a gateway to the other. But it is also a development issue, an economic development issue. There are studies that we have done, others have done, on how costly it is. You know, they, they, there is a calculation, and it's even in developed countries. In, in Australia, there, there's a calculation that has been done that the loss to GDP of violence against women is as much as $14 billion a year. So, you know, it, it is the opportunity cost to economic development. So we want that recognition as well. What is UN Women looking for in the post-2015 development agenda? We look at it as a tremendous opportunity to make sure that whatever shortcomings there were in MDG 3, they should be rectified. MDG 3 was the least well, uh, well defined. Uh, it was, it did not have uh, all the elements necessary. It was not a transformative goal. Hmm? It did not have all the, and it did not address any of the structural issues behind or underlying uh, gender inequality and, and women's disempowerment. And therefore, what we seek now is, first of all, implementation of MDG 3 up to 2015 to make sure that that happens. Secondly, to make sure that any new generation of development goals that emerges and that becomes part of the post-2015 development framework, that it includes a stand-alone, comprehensive, transformative development goal on gender equality and women's empowerment. That should include the economic dimension, women's needs, interests, and uh, perspectives must be reflected and mainstreamed into these goals through gender-sensitive targets and indicators.